Hey, I'm Alec, and today we're going to talk about how to set up a desktop fabrication station for desktop CNC's. Where entry level used to cost tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars is now an affordable addition to the workshop for individuals and businesses alike, desktop CNC's. Here at Matter Hackers, we've worked with many different CNC's, and it's safe to say we've learned the do's and don'ts of these setups and conditions. Whether you're looking for just the right layout for your tools or looking to explore the different options for streamlining your workflow, I've compiled this list of different tips to give you the best chance of success for your new desktop CNC. Let's get started. Every form of digital manufacturing has its conditions that can make or break a successful operation. In the case of desktop CNC's, it's gonna be the mess and the noise. No matter what you do, you're going to create dust, and when you have a motor spinning at thousands of RPMs, it's gonna be noisy, in addition to the vacuum used to help try to cut down on some of that dust. Ideally, you'll wanna set this up behind a door or somewhere that you can just have it out of the way to help cut down on the noise and try to keep the dust localized. With smaller enclosed CNC's like the Carbide Nomad or the CNC attachment for the Z-Morph, it's usually easier to set these up indoors than some of the bigger ones. A small room tucked away is typically enough to get these manageable. Since they are enclosed, you don't need to run a vacuum during the entire operation, which could take hours. Instead, you can wait till the operation is finished, open the hood, and get cleaning. And the enclosed ones tend to be both compact and dense, so make sure that your table can support the weight and that it's not going to vibrate or resonate when the spindle reaches high speeds. For larger CNC's, the dimensions are measured in feet instead of inches, so you will want to set this up in somewhere like a garage or a workshop. Basically anywhere where if it gets dusty or dirty, it's not going to be of much concern. And because of these sizes, you're not going to find an enclosure that easily. Instead, you'll find something like a dust shoe or a similar dust management system to have a vacuum running during the entire operation to suck up most of the dust. It won't suck up all of it, so you will need to find something else if you're looking for an 100% dust-free solution. Depending on the size of your CNC, you will have different solutions for how you need to manage your materials. In either case, you'll want to try and make things set up so that you don't need to move materials around to get to the piece you need, kind of like books on a bookshelf. For smaller CNC's, you would do just fine with a cabinet or shelf just off to the side with all of your plastics, soft metals, and woods properly labeled and organized, of course. But for something of this size, you'll need some very different considerations. When your work area is three feet wide and three feet long, it becomes a lot harder to manage those materials. So having something like a table saw where you can rip down plywood is gonna make it a lot easier to use something like this. In our case, with our large machine in our limited space, I will break out our table saw and help rip down some plywood so that we have much more manageable pieces than a huge four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood. A first priority is to have all your PPE in an easy to access and ready to use location and to always put it back in the same place when you're done using it. Having a dust mask or respirator rated for dust particulate, not vapor, protective eyewear and hearing protection is all essential when you're working with large CNC's. For the smaller enclosed ones, since they are enclosed, you can get away with not wearing a dust mask or respirator, but the protective eyewear and hearing protection is non-negotiable. When it comes to software, at least in the beginning, use what comes prepackaged with your CNC from the manufacturer. For those with 3D modeling experience, you may find that you start to outpace what the software is capable of with what you want to do with it. In that case, there are free and paid for softwares out there that will allow you to use the advanced capabilities of your machine, like 3D milling or even easy tool changing. And speaking of tools, take note that you will amass a large number of end mills the more you use your CNC. A coworker milled out this really nice holder for all of our end mills, wrenches, and collets, which not only is it really helpful to keep things organized, it also has room for us to grow. If you'd like to learn more about end mills, be sure to check out our end mill comparison guide right here. When it comes to clamping, everyone does it differently. Some use metal threaded inserts so that you can thread right into it through the board. Others use a T-track and clamp setup. Others just have used wood screws directly into the wasteboard. Everything is a bit different, so you may consider upgrading yours if you find that you aren't satisfied with what you have. I've seen something used by other makers in the community that I actually am quite fond of, and that's putting painter's tape down on the wasteboard, along the backside of your work surface, and then super gluing the tape together. That way, it is a permanent bond between the tape, but a really easy release thanks to the adhesive used on painter's tape. Keeping a CNC clean is gonna be an everlasting battle as you find dust gathering in places you didn't even know possible. 
Start out by using a vacuum to clean up all the dust after you're done with an operation, then use a brush to help get all the dust off of these surfaces it's stuck to, and then vacuum that up. When you're finished with that, take a look at the scrap wood you have and really decide if you want to use it or if it's just trash and there's no way you could use it again. You don't want to have to set this in a box and forget about it for six months until you even think about it again. Keep it lean. Keeping your CNC clean is the biggest part of maintaining it. If you have too much dust built up in the fan that keeps the controller board cool or in the moving parts of the CNC itself, you can get skip steps, which means that the path gets offset in the middle of your print job, which can ruin your workpiece and in worst case scenarios, also break your bit. And if your machine uses roller wheels, you wanna make sure these aren't over tension because if they are, then they'll create flats over time and you'll need to replace them prematurely. If you're mainly carving all the way through your material and marring the surface of the wasteboard, then you will need to replace the wasteboard more often than if you're just going partway through your workpiece. Because the more that you mar this top surface, the less flat it becomes and the less reliable. When compared to 3D printers, CNC's have a lot less that can go wrong with them. The biggest thing is gonna be keeping sure that your feeds and speeds are set properly. Feeds mean how fast the machine is actually moving around on the piece, and your speed is how fast the spindle is spinning. There are too many materials to list exactly which feed and speed to use for each and every one. The general rule to follow is that you want your spindle speed set fast enough that it can easily remove chips, but slow enough that it's not heating up your material, causing it to burn or melt. You also want your feed rate set so that it's moving fast enough to not just rub the material in the same place it's already cut, but slow enough that it's not starting to deflect the end mill. In either case, if you have any trouble, you can always call or email us and get help from a Matter Hackers Pro to help you get through your problem. Desktop CNC's have a lot to offer for many workshops, whether it's creating weekend builds, prototypes, or end use products. Making sure that the environment of the CNC is well thought out and that your workflow is ready and prepared can make what would otherwise be a daunting task much simpler and easy to process. I hope that this has gotten your mind at ease and that you're ready to start milling. If you have anything you'd like me to know or other CNC users, be sure to leave that in the comments down below. Have fun milling. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video on how to set up a fabrication station for desktop CNC's. And I hope that this gave you some ideas on how to properly manage your CNC station. If you want to read some in-depth articles, be sure to read some articles from matterhackers.com or to stay up to date with all of our digital manufacturing content, be sure to subscribe. See you on the next one.